tritium. It glows. It's radioactive. But what is it? Will it mute your chromosomes? Will a TSA confiscate your watch or whatever? Wilbur's done the research. Stand by. Tritium is amazing stuff, and it glows 24-7 without having to be recharged by light like luminescent paints do. It's used on uh, tactical gun sights, keychains, and watches, like this uh, really cool ball fireman uh, nightbreaker that I just got. I love the glow on this, and I use it as a, uh, a clock at night because I can see it glowing all night long. If you want to see what that's about, you can watch my unboxing video for the Ball Fireman Nightbreaker, um, or I should be having a review video out in a couple of weeks. I often hear the question how long the tritium is going to last. As well, you might want to know because a new set of sights for your gun, probably $100 plus, and I imagine it's much more than that to get it replaced in your watch. The good news is that the half-life of tritium is about 12.3 years, uh, which means that it will decay into helium and lose half its radioactivity in that period of time. And I have to say that the uh, sights on my Glock that I bought 27 years ago still have some glow in them, so you do get a pretty good lifespan. But what is tritium and how does it work? Tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. It's created as a byproduct uh, in uh, nuclear fission reactions or uh, you know, a nuclear reactor. It's um, also known as hydrogen-3 or 3H. So what you see in watches and stuff are actually little glass tubes full of this hydrogen-3 gas or tritium gas. Um, it spits out really low energy beta particles. If you're interested in more technical information, I've got tons of links below on, you know, so that you can dive into the details. And, but anyway, what you see actually glowing is the on the inside of those tubes, they're coated with uh, phosphorus, and uh, which is excited by the beta particles that are released as the um, the tritium uh, decays and it also glows really cool under a black light. So you might ask just how radioactive is it and will the TSA freak out and not let you on the plane? The short answer is not much. And no. The long answer is the beta particles will only penetrate about six millimeters in the air, a quarter inch, and the amount of radiation is very, very low. So you could barely detect it with the Geiger counter. And the TSA probably couldn't detect it even if they wanted to. Also, beta particles can't penetrate the dead layer of skin cells on the outside of your skin. And so there's a little danger of, of radiation. So long as the glass vials remain intact, your danger from tritium is pretty much zero, as far as I can tell. Tritium itself, though, is dangerous stuff. So tritium can be quite harmful if you ingest it. It is a beta particle it, uh, emitter, and if it's internalized, it can damage your DNA and increase your risk of cancer. How does radiation affect your DNA? Well, in this case, uh, the beta particles will fly out and impact the DNA chain on the inside of a cell. That creates errors in the code or instructions that the cell uses in order to know how to behave. If just the wrong error occurs, then the cell will replicate uncontrollably and become cancerous. So what if you broke open one of these glass tubes? 
As I understand it, the hydrogen bonds with water in the air and dissipates very quickly. So unless you were right there breathing it in, there's not a great deal of chance that you would in get it inside your body. It does absorb pretty easily through your skin also, that I understand. So in the unlikely event you manage to break open one of these tubes, you should get away from it as quickly as possible and let it dissipate. But if you think you've breathed some or absorbed some, it basically bonds with the water in your body and so you would want to uh, flush that out as quickly as possible. So from what I've read, it sounds like most of it would process through your body in about 10 days and you might be able to speed that up if you drank a lot of water and, and flushed your system out. So in conclusion, I would say that used properly, the danger of using tritium is very small. Devices with tritium in it should be treated with respect, uh, just like all the other things that we come in contact with every day that have poisonous materials in them. And I got to thinking about it, you know, the, the force it would take to you know, break the tubes inside my watch would be so great that if I was wearing the watch when it happened, um, I would probably be reduced into a puddle of squish and a little radiation probably would be my least of my troubles. Of course you have to make your own decision about tritium but I seriously love stuff that glows. Thanks for watching. Wilbur out.